A man standing on an empty street, wide-brimmed hat, two steel pistols in his leather holster, glinting in the bright noonday sun. Cowboys, outlaws, gun-wielding pirates, even Stephen King's gunslinger. There's a rich history of gunslinging heroes. I didn't use any modern examples like John Wick or Christian Bale's cleric or guys like that because the raw rules for D&D are pretty limiting in terms of firearms. While there are firearms listed in the DMG, they are specifically optional. Uh, so your DM might choose not to have them in their campaign setting. Um, if that's the case, you know, you can certainly talk to them, but this build will not work, right? You need firearms in order to be a gunslinger. Where there is firearms used in campaigns, it's often these kind of like early sort of uh, flintlocky type of, uh, of guns. So. Even the revolver, which is going to be our preferred weapon for this particular build, um, might be kind of like on the edge of what's possible for a firearms-based campaign. Nonetheless, um, I think that this is a, a quintessential hero archetype. The, the items are there, the optional rules are there, there's uh, a foundation for us to lean in and use firearms to shoot. Uh, and we are going to see what we can do to take advantage of them. I will say, even though this channel often kind of jumps between some amount of numerical optimization and some amount of like living the fantasy of the character, um, this character is going to have a lot of damage focused abilities and is going to do some pretty good damage, but nothing broken, certainly not compared to like real optimized you know, crazy uh, artificer blade singer builds. Um, you will be a damage dealer in the party for sure, um, but it is not going to break your DM campaign by any means. If that helps you convince them to let you get away with this build, please add that in. Um, this is not a uh, you know super duper game breaking uh, build. It is damage focused, and we're going to be talking about damage numbers a lot. Uh, but if you compare it to even like the, the baseline, the Warlock with uh, Eldritch Blasts and Agonizing Blasts and all that kind of stuff, I think it, it just about tops that um, by a little bit, by some small percentage. So um, take heart, Noble DM. Uh, this will not be the death of you. So let's talk about the Revolver. Um, this is a weapon that requires you to be... Um, within 40 feet for normal range or 120 feet for long range. A long range, of course, gives you disadvantage. Um, so it's this definitely not a longer range uh, uh, fighter. You, you can remember like longbows and stuff or even Eldritch Blast, the cantrip has that 120 foot range. Um, we are kind of looking to fight people within 30 to 40 feet of us. Uh, with that said, a lot of battles are on roughly that scale. So I think this is very, very good for us. It has the reload property, which means you need to take a bonus action to reload it. But because it's a revolver, um, it only needs to be done every six shots. So uh, you can get away with, uh, even at higher levels, like two turns of shooting without needing to reload. It does 2d8 piercing damage on a hit, which is pretty darn high. Um, and uh, we are going to be taking advantage of that, that that's higher weapon uh, damage than you know a sword or a longbow even a great axe is not going to do 2d8 damage right the long run average of 2d8 is 9 damage uh, great axes with their d12 is uh, on average going to do 6 to 7 so very very good solid base damage for your gun and then of course you're going to add your dexterity because that is a ranged weapon so 2d8 plus whatever our dexterity is. 
correspondingly, um, our dexterity is going to be high. We are going to need really good dexterity. Um, we are also going to want to have a, a decent wisdom score, um, but nothing crazy. So max dexterity, uh, whatever you can get with your rolls or point by, of course, we're going to uh, we're going to make sure we end up with at least a 16. One thing that needs to be addressed about the revolver is the price. So revolvers in the DMG cost something like 500 gold pieces, uh, which is a lot. Uh, if we equate kind of gold pieces to US uh, dollars, that's kind of a around $50,000 for a revolver. So where your level one character is showing up with, you know, state of the art uh, weaponry is going to have to be between you and your DM. Uh, if I was a DM, I'm not sure I would allow a level one character to walk up with a revolver, but try this maybe pitch them on you stole it and the people that you stole it from are after you so you are on the lamb running away from them that gives your dm you know a great set of bad guys to ambush you with at any given time uh, and you get to have your revolver uh, maybe you took out a loan and uh to to buy this weapon because you knew it was your your destiny and uh now you are in desperate need of money and will do anything for some cash. Uh, that gives your DM a great plot hook to, to pull you around with. So offer them something plot wise so that you can get this revolver uh, early on. Uh, if you must, I guess you can take a musket or something like that uh, or a flintlock pistol. Uh, they're not as good weapons. Uh, and if you're going to have an expensive firearm, you might as well have the expensive firearm that we want. So uh, see what you can do there. <laughs> But I will be the first one to admit this build kind of rules as written. Uh, you, you're you're in some tough, tough waters uh, trying to get this off to a good start. So, for our race, I think that um, I don't think there is a gunslinging character in fantasy or fiction that is not human, and there is a feat that we want as soon as we possibly can. We will once again go the variant human or custom lineage route this time taking the gunner feat. Um, the gunner feat is going to give us some stuff that we absolutely desperately need. Uh, the great thing about the gunner feat, so first of all, it's a half feat. Um, so it's gonna give us a single point of dexterity that we can use to start building up our dexterity even further. Um, you're gonna gain proficiency with firearms, which is very key because uh, rules is written. Only Artificers would start with that proficiency, and we aren't going to take any levels in Artificer. Uh, it also says you can ignore the loading property of firearms, so even though our revolver allows us to make uh, six shots without reloading, we can now completely ignore that. As long as we've got ammunition in our inventory, we are effectively like loading as we fire like some of the greats uh, in movies. Uh, and then, as well, uh, being within five feet of creature does not impose disadvantage on your ranged attack rolls. This is going to uh, allow us to kind of live the fantasy of, you know, firing off at a distance and someone sneaks up on us from behind and we just fire right at them at point blank range. Um, this is going to cut off one of the kind of weaknesses of ranged characters, which is when someone gets up close, uh, you're in trouble. And now we are just as dangerous within five feet as we are at 20 paces. <laughs> For our class, um, as I mentioned, we're not taking any levels of Artificer, which might be surprising to most folks. Um, instead, what we are going to do is we are going to be picking up on this, uh, this class that has a lot more to do with um, kind of being in touch with nature, which sounds strange until you consider the life of a cowboy always uh, in the saddle, roaming the wilderness, tending to the cows, dealing with the, the wilderness and the elements, uh, living by the campfire. You can see how this person might have a connection to the environment that they're in. Uh, and we are going to be taking a level of ranger here. Uh, we're actually going to be taking several levels of ranger. Um, this is kind of our primary class. And hey, uh, look at that. Now we are uh, a lone ranger. Huh? 
at least until you meet your friends. All right. Um, uh, Ranger is perfect for us here. Uh, we got this um, kind of partial connection to nature, and I recommend, you know, if you take a favored terrain to do desert, because uh, that's just too cowboy to, to pass up. Um, and we are going to be uh, building up our proficiency with firearms. Um, taking, of course, our fighting style of archery. Uh, archery might look like it's for bows and arrows, but it says for any ranged attacks, which of course um, our guns are. So we're adding plus two to our attack rolls with our revolver now, which is truly fantastic. Um, we are also going to start getting spell casting. For the most part, this spell casting is a great opportunity to um, bring some utility to the party. In a fight, you're almost always going to be wanting to uh, fire your weapon as many times as you possibly can. So use these spells for out of combat reasons. Uh, if you want to detect poison, um, if you want to you know, disguise self or pull a rope trick, that's what this spell casting is going to be for. Then at third level, we are choosing our archetype. Um, and maybe to some people's surprise, uh, we are going with a player's handbook subclass, the hunter. Now, um, the hunter is going to give us an op a series of options at each of its major uh, subclass features. And we are only going to be hitting this first one. Um, and that is the option uh, uh, between Colossus Slayer, Giant Killer, and Horde Breaker. Uh, with Colossus Slayer being a little bit more oriented towards single target damage, so um, continuing to strike the same creature over and over again. Giant Killer uh, is kind of more tanky. Uh, like if you were going to be up close and personal with a bad guy, this is what you would want. Um, what we are going to select, though, is Horde Breaker. Horde Breaker says, on each of your turns, when you make a weapon attack, you can make another attack with the same weapon against a different creature that is within five feet of the target and within range of your weapon. Um, this means that we are dealing, uh, we are doing additional shots from our revolver um, each turn if we're up against multiple targets within five feet of each other. Uh, the reason this is super, super helpful is um, as I mentioned, this revolver has the highest base weapon damage of anything in the game, which means the more shots we take, the more damage we are doing, even more so than uh, that would be the case with a long sword or with a great axe or with any other weapon. So what we basically want to be doing is, is stacking as many attacks as we can. Uh, so this Horde Breaker brings us to potentially two attacks per turn. Um, but of course we will uh, find a way to get it even higher than that. By the way, if you want to have a good use for your bonus action, you don't need it for um, for the second attack. You don't need it to reload. Uh, you might want to use it for uh, Hunter's Mark uh, if that is to your fancy, which would add to your damage numbers. For level four, we do want to keep boosting our dexterity. We are gonna aim to have this maxed out by the end of the build. Um, so add another two to your dexterity here at level four. At level five, we are going to get that coveted multi-attack, and we are now making three attacks per turn, provided there are two enemies within five feet of each other somewhere uh, within the range of your gun. Um, that means each turn you are putting out 6d8 plus 12 damage, um, which is pretty considerable uh, even for a level five character. Level 6 in Ranger isn't particularly uh, enticing, and uh, while I would love to get to the level 7 features of the Hunter, um, I don't think it's worth throwing a dead level in uh, just to get there. Those abilities are more kind of a, a flashy, fun, showy, than they are like a useful, sustained, damaging ability. So we are going to go to um, the King of useless sustained damage, and that is the fighter for level six. Uh, so we'll be ranger five, fighter one. Um, obviously, what we were getting here is the normal fighter stuff, uh, getting that second wind, which will provide very little hit points at this point. With fighter one, we do get another fighting style. Um, since we already have archery and not a lot of the other ones uh, are super applicable to us, we might as well pick up the defense fighting style um, to get a plus one to our AC. 
there's not a lot that we're going to do that's going to improve our armor class uh, over the long run of this character, which is a bit of a uh, sore spot for us. So I think just grabbing defense is, is going to help um, minorly mitigate that flaw. As we move on to fighter level 2 with the character level 7, we are of course going to get that beautiful, beautiful fighter feature, Action Surge, uh, which is going to allow us to make uh, a second action, which we would take the attack action, which would get two more attacks. Um, plus, the Horde Breaker says when you take the attack action. Um, so we can be making up to six shots in a turn now if we use our Action Surge, um, which we can only do once per short rest. Six shots is, of course, 12d8 plus uh, 24 from our dexterity, an average of 78 damage on our action surge turn. Um, that's enormous, and it does rely on there being kind of a pack of bad guys, but you can imagine that we are just like fanning the hammer on that revolver, blasting away uh, at everything around us, um, and that is going to feel incredible when you actually get to, to do it. Oh. Moving on, I think that there are some things that we want to be able to do with a gun that um, the normal mechanics of the game won't allow us to do. So we are going to take the Battle Master subclass, uh, which is going to give us you know, certain features that will, will make it more stylish and more effective in our, uh, in our shooting. So with the Battle Master class, we are going to get certain maneuvers uh, that is going to give us a little bit of flair uh, and strategic use for our weapon. I think that it would be pretty fun to grab uh, Disarming Strike. You can just imagine the Gunslinger kind of pulling out and firing and like shooting the sword out of someone's hand, or if there's another person with a firearm, you know, like blasting it out of theirs. I'm a spirit walker. Uh, it's just this fun way of intimidating someone without um, without having to hurt them, um, and is great in a fight for really reducing the, the damage that an enemy does. Um, I think it's stylish, but not all enemies have weapons. If you're up against like you know a dragon or an owl bear or any of the thousands of monsters that basically just use their natural bodies to attack, it's kind of useless. So I would go with Precision Attack as well here. Uh, precision Attack is going to exemplify this, you know, like uh, you're kind of aiming off the back of your own arm um, to get this like really well-placed shot, um, hitting the bullseye each time. Precision Strike will let you add to your attack roll. Um, this is very good against heavily armored targets. Um, now your modus operandi is to fire several times with your gun so i wouldn't necessarily say uh that this is uh that precision strike is always going to be super helpful the damage on each of your hits isn't super stacked um, but it's very very useful i think uh if if it's necessary for you to get that one shot off 2d8 plus your dexterity is is no laughing matter regardless Another one that you should consider, evasive footwork. I know, it's it's so boring, but um, as a gunslinger, your armor class isn't great, your health isn't super high, um, and you can attack from a range, but your enemies might need to get closer to you to attack. So being able to run away without taking those opportunity attacks might actually be a really effective battlefield strategy. Um, it's just not, it's not flashy. It's not fun. It's not showy. If you do want another showy one, you could use Distracting Strike, uh, which is going to help someone else. Uh, basically, you distract your enemy, and that other person gets advantage on their attack. Maybe that is uh, closer to the role that you want to be in the party if you have someone who, uh, like a rogue, needs that advantage um, to get their sneak attack and to uh, land that big hit. Hey, hey! Was that sign damaged before? So consider that if you've got that sort of situation. Between all those different variables, I think uh, three of those four should be pretty easy choices. Um, I myself would take Disarming Strike 
uh, evasive footwork and precision attack. All right, level nine choices. If we were using the point by system uh, for our uh, for our stats, the variant human is going to get plus one plus one. We've then added a dex boost. We're sitting on an 18 dexterity. I want this capped, so I'm going to recommend another um, dexterity ability score increase. I do want to address another option, which is the sharpshooter feature. By this point uh, in your character build, your proficiency bonus is a 4, and your dexterity is a 4, and your uh, archery fighting style is getting a plus 2 as well. So you're adding plus 10 to each of your uh, attacks to hit, with the possibility of using precision strike in a pinch. This means against an enemy who is in full plate mail armor, uh, you will still be hitting them about 60% of the time. And most creatures have armor classes lower than that. The sharpshooter feat allows you to take a minus 5 to hit to get plus 10 damage on a ranged attack. This would mean on our kind of nova round where we make 6 shots in the turn, we would be adding potentially maybe 60 damage uh, onto that. That would take us well over the 100 damage mark, you know, here in turn 9, assuming that you hit. And this is the big assumption. So, if you were to take Sharpshooter, your chance to hit would decrease pretty significantly, um, but your damage would increase pretty significantly if you did hit. It's up to you whether you want to do this. Um, a dexterity boost is going to increase our chance to hit and our damage by a small amount. So instead of being a trade-off, it's kind of a small boost to both. Um, I'm going to take it because I think that there's um, a lot of use in uh, having a high dexterity um, kind of outside of this combat scenario. And we are already a really intimidating gunslinger um, with it. Um, I will admit, though, Sharpshooter is uh, very good for our damage numbers, uh, if that is what you're looking for. And that is going to take us to level 10. So the build is just about finished. Um, we've got our maneuvers to make us a skilled and kind of cunning gunslinger. We've got our uh, extra attack with our Horde Breaker um, bonuses so that we are a fast shooting, high damage dealing gunslinger. Um, I think that uh, what, we, what we really need here is not another level one fighter. That would actually get us nothing because we already have multi-attack. Um, we don't love Ranger 6. Again, we, we multi-classed out to avoid it. So... I'm going to go a third class here. If you know for sure that you're going a few more levels, I would encourage you to plow through that ranger uh, gap and get into the uh, into the hunter features later on. Um, there's some great ones where you can fire your guns like at a particular range and just hit everyone in the range, or maybe shoot a whirlwind attack all the way around you. Um, you can imagine someone like arms out to either side, just spinning, firing their gun constantly. Uh, you would get to do something like that if you if you wanted to but my one level i think that a, a classic cowboy trope um gunslinger trope is uh to be kind of a man of god right christianity uh, has some reach over the wild wild west um, and our our cowboy has spent many uh, a twilight um, sitting around the campfire uh, in the safety of the night. You know, the days are hot and filled with work and danger. The nights are for rest and relaxation. And he has begun to, to worship God in, uh, in the form of the night or the, the twilight. And we're going to take one level of Twilight Domain Cleric. We have the wisdom for it, since we were already a ranger. 
Um, and what this is going to get us are three things. So famously, what the Twilight will give you is 300 feet of dark vision for you and your whole party, which is incredible since we had zero dark vision thus far. Variant humans don't get it. So uh, if your party was doing anything in a dungeon or anything at night or anything whatsoever, you know, in a cave, um, you were probably not helpful at all. Um, but 300 feet of dark vision with level 10 now is going to make us um, deadly at night. Uh, borderline, um, you know, kind of a, a really force to be reckoned with as we're able to fire with accuracy at people um, in darkness. We're also going to get um, we're also going to get an ability to give either someone else or ourselves advantage on initiative rolls, which I think is super super fun for like the quickest draw in the West, right? Um, your gun is in your hand and firing before you even know that it's happening. Um, with our max dexterity, so plus five and advantage, you've got a very strong chance of hitting like a 20 or a 22 dexterity or a 20 or a 22 initiative um, consistently, which means you are going to be the first one out the gate. You are going to get to blast away um, and set the terms of the battle. Especially if you're doing something like a disarming strike, um, you want to do that up front before they get a chance to use their weapon. Finally, uh, we're going to get more spell casting, um, and specifically the spell I'm interested in here is Fairy Fire. Fairy Fire, as you know, um, is a dexterity save for everyone in a certain area, and if they fail, you get advantage on uh, strikes against them. A very plausible uh, turn could be Fairy Firing a group of enemies, your team all gets advantage then in that first round, and then the second round comes around, you go out swinging with uh, with your, your action surge, blasting away, advantage on every shot. I would be astonished if the bad guys are still standing. Uh, you would be the start and end of that fight within uh, you know, kind of a one round's time. Obviously that spellcasting is going to add on to our ranger spellcasting, um, and we are in pretty good shape there. We have lots of utility, both in and out of combat. And now, you are an expert gunslinger, a man of god, dueling with fast, accurate shots, dealing a ton of damage, and then blending back into the desert, avoiding the lawman. Well played. <laughs>